British Columbia is a place no, like no other. Everyone who was born here or who has come here knows that this place is special and absolutely unique. However, there are a few ways in which we could be more like others in this country. On the issue of political and democratic reform, your government acknowledges more should have been done sooner and more needs to be done now. Your government will pursue comprehensive reforms that will ban corporate, union, and third-party donations, including donations in kind to political parties, impose a maximum donation limit for individuals to political parties, comparable to other Canadian jurisdictions, ban donations to political parties from outside British Columbia, including foreign donations, ban funding to a provincial political party from a federal political party, restrict the role of money influencing collections through third parties, ban loans to parties by, other, by any organization other than a Canadian chartered bank or credit union, and apply these reforms to local government candidates and political parties. The results that British Columbians delivered in the May election require cooperation. Your government is committed to working with all parties in the legislature. Following referenda in 2005 and 2009, there remains a desire by many members in this place to revisit electoral reform. With the confidence of this House, your government will enable a third referendum on electoral reform. It will require extensive public consultation to develop a clear question and will ensure rural representation in the legislature is protected. It is vital that any referendum reflects the views of British Columbians, not just its political parties. Additionally, your government will work with other parties to strengthen, strengthen lobbyist legislation and regulations. Members, we gather for the first time since British Columbians sent you here following an unprecedented outcome in the May election. British Columbians want a stable government, and in sending us this result, they expect us to listen and find a way to work together. They expect us to collaborate while respecting the dignity, rules, and traditions that govern our constitutional monarchy, our democracy, and this legislature. British Columbians voted for parties that spoke to the importance of economic growth and jobs, strengthening our social programs, and protecting our environment. They have told us to find a better balance to move forward on all these priorities. The election results also exposed a growing gap in understanding between rural and urban BC. We have an obligation to do everything we can to bridge that gap because urban and rural communities cannot succeed without one another. With that in mind, instead of focusing on areas of disagreement, we should reflect on who it is that we are and what we share in common. We are fortunate to reside in a part of the world that is unmatched in many ways. We have Canada's most diverse population of First Nations and Indigenous peoples whose cultures have shaped our province and with whom we seek justice, reconciliation, and partnerships in economic growth. An abundance of natural resources, the bedrock of British Columbia's economic success. A system of clean, transformational power that is the envy of the world, created by previous generations with the opportunity to transform our economy into the cleanest in the world. A super natural and biodiverse environment that we enjoy today and must protect, protect for future generations. A diverse population that is open-minded, independent, and prepared to embrace change a place where we have the freedom to be ourselves. Thriving urban communities and strong rural communities that connect us to our land and wildlife. A province built on hard work, 
leading in jobs and economic growth and with a financial foundation that is the envy of North America. Your government worked diligently to create jobs and economic growth in the province. And thanks to that effort, your government will confirm a higher than expected surplus at public accounts in July. This unanticipated surplus provides reason to consider moving our fixed election date to the fall to ensure British Columbians are fully informed on our province's fiscal position before a general election. While other provinces have created structural deficits, BC's unmatched record of five successive balanced budgets has created a structural surplus that puts us in an enviable position. This moves up the anticipated elimination of our operating debt to 2020, one year ahead of schedule, an accomplishment not achieved since 1976. Growing surpluses allow us to return dividends to British Columbians, but our sound fiscal management must be nurtured and not taken for granted. Your government recognizes the importance of labor stability in the province and will continue to share the dividends of economic growth in public se sector labor agreements. Over the past decade, most labor issues have ended without disruption. This is a sign that the labor code is fair and as such, no further changes are contemplated by your government.